I am the resurrection and the life, says the Lord. Whoever believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. And everyone who lives and believes in me shall never die. For I know that my Redeemer lives, and at the last he shall stand upon the earth. And after my skin has been thus destroyed, yet in my flesh shall I see God, whom I shall see for myself, and my eyes shall behold and not another. For none of us lives to himself, and none of us dies to himself. For if we live, we live to the Lord. And if we die, we die to the Lord. So then, whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. For we brought nothing into the world, and it is certain we carry nothing out. The Lord gave, and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed are the dead who die in the Lord. Even so, says the Spirit, for they rest from their labors. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O oh God, who by the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, destroyed death and brought life and immortality to light, grant that your servant Steve, being raised with Christ, may know the strength of his presence and rejoice in his eternal victory, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. If you'll join me as we recite one of my dad's favorite verses, the 23rd Psalm. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Revelation 21, 2 through 7. And I saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Behold, the dwelling place of God is with man. He will dwell with them, and they will be his people. And God himself will be with them as their God. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes, and death shall be no more. Neither shall there be mourning, nor crying, nor pain any more, for the former things have passed away. And he who was seated on the throne said, Behold, I am making all things new. Also, he said, Write this down, for these words are trustworthy and true. And he said to me, it is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty I will give from the spring of the water of life without payment. The one who conquers will have this heritage, and I will be his God, and he will be my son. The word of the Lord. Thank you.
reading from the Gospel according to John. Let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, I would, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, that where I am, you may be also. And you know the way to where I am going. Thomas said, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? And Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. The word of the Lord. Good afternoon. First of all, thank you all for coming today. You have no idea how much this means to both me and my family over here to see all of your faces, or as much as we can see of them, so thank you. For those of you that I haven't met or don't yet know, I am Steve, or GPEP, as you'll hear us call him, eldest grandson. That in and of itself is probably a miracle for GPOP, as I'm sure having four daughters and then three granddaughters preceding me he probably thought he'd never have another boy in the family. <laughs> Accordingly, my parents thought it fitting to betroth me with the middle name Stephen, always with a PH, as I like to remind people, just like G-Pop. And because lightning wasn't guaranteed to strike twice, that's why I have the name. I might have been the only boy. And it sure looked that way for another 14 years, but that's another story. Enough about me. I want to talk about G-Pop. And I've only got three to five minutes to speak about 93 years of servanthood. So I've got quite a bit to squeeze in. And if you'll entertain me, I'd like to share three quick stories that embody the three qualities that I admired most about G-Pop. The first is his faith. I speak with 100% confidence in knowing that G-Pop is in a better, more beautiful place right now and gets to experience the fullness of our Lord and Savior. So while we may mourn his absence here, we may one day rejoice with him in heaven. G-Pop is like Abraham to me, except instead of many sons, he had many daughters. <laughs> he is the father, father of a wonderful family filled with the followers of Christ, and each one of us can attribute part of finding our faith to either the influence directly or indirectly that G-Pop had on us. The most recent example that I can recall was just about a month and a half ago at our annual family beach trip. My wife and I had just arrived and walked into the main unit where we normally congregate for meals and dinner. Nobody was there besides G-Pop, and upon waking him from his brief nap, we said hello, gave him a hug, and reintroduced him to our daughter Madison and our yet-to-be-born son Jacob. He smiled warmly, gave us a hug, and before drifting back off into what we thought was a nap, he started speaking. 30 seconds, or excuse me, he started speaking. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for your son, thank you for this family, and thank you for these new little ones you blessed us with. His mind may have started to slip, but his faith never did. Four daughters, nine grandchildren, three great-grandchildren, and another on the way. Quite a legacy if you ask me. The thing about family for G-Pop is that it wasn't just a noun. It wasn't just a static word. It was an action. It meant time together. It meant packing up the car to drive 300 miles to Atlanta to watch me play high school baseball, often enough that my coach still knows my grandparents' name. It meant finding a place in Longbow Key 40 years ago for the family to retreat each July to reconnect and relax. And the beautiful thing about this action is that it instilled that action into each one of us. 
And it's that same action that will continue long after his life and long after my own. At this point, I've covered faith and family. And if you're born and raised in the South like myself, then your last priority is football. Faith, family, and football. And while G-Pop loved the Gators, this was most assuredly not one of his best qualities. <laughs> Kidding aside, besides the last weekend in October and November for the Dogs and the Knolls, G-Pop was a man of integrity. He was not only a man of integrity and in leading our judicial system, but a man of integrity when nobody was looking either. This story predates me a little bit, but I'll do my best second-hand rendition. My father and mother were in England with Gigi and G-Pop vacationing. And on the last day, while they were in New York, G-Pop got a parking ticket on his rental car. Now for most people, a parking ticket on a rental car in a foreign country for what couldn't have been more than a few pounds, that'd be an afterthought, crumpled up and thrown into the nearest trash can. However, G-Pop is not most people. And because it wasn't readily distinguishable how to pay said parking ticket, G-Pop spent two hours driving around town looking for a way to pay. Mind you, this is the last day of vacation. After talking to a number of people and searching at length, he finally found a police station that he paid. And I'm sure, speculating here, that the officers that he paid were quite surprised that someone went to such a length to pay such a simple parking ticket. And while I'm not sure that the passengers were thrilled, being in the last day of vacation, Proverbs 22.1 does say, a good name is to be chosen rather than great riches. And a good name indeed was Steve Grimes. We've all gained so much from knowing Steve. He was a wonderful man, as I'm sure we all know. These stories are just a small glimpse of 93 years well lived and the last 29 I'll cherish fondly. His memory is one that I won't soon forget because outside of my name, my blue eyes, and my early love for investing, I did get one other thing from G-Pop that most of you don't know, an affinity for poetry. He would write them for special moments and I like to do the same, so I'll close with one here quickly. Here's an ode to a life that was lived for the Lord, a servant called home after 93 years. Your treasures in heaven that you have stored, may we rejoice amongst our tears. A man of the people that you were, a husband of Fay and a G-pop to lots. A life of service, that's for sure. A love for the law would consume your thoughts. You taught us to love in tennis too, you stuck with the Cubs through trying times. We'll never forget to remember you. Thank you for everything, Justice Grimes. Thank you. To the glory of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Amen. Thank you, Jeremy, and thank you for being here. If it's not pouring down rain, immediately after the liturgy, we'll have uh, military honors for Steve in the front of the church and a reception on the North Lawn. Steve was a humble man. And I think probably the last thing that he would want me to do would be to go on and on about what a great man he was. Because truly great men like Steve don't need to be talked about. But I do want to say a few things to celebrate Steve's life and also to articulate some of the reasons why we're grieved at his loss. If I were to describe Steve with one word, I think that that word would be generous. He was generous in the true and large sense of that word. He was generous with his time. He was generous in inviting other people into his life. 
He was generous with the commitments that he made. He was generous with his friendship, and he was generous in living into his many responsibilities. Service, of course, was an important part of Steve's life, as everyone, I think, knows. And many people and institutions benefited from his dedicated service rendered with complete integrity. Steve served his country in the Merchant Marine and in the United States Navy. He served the people of Florida on the First District Court of Appeal and on the Florida Supreme Court. He served countless individuals in countless ways doing everything from helping challenged first, grade read, first graders to learn to read to delivering meals on wheels. And he also served his church. He was a Sunday school teacher, a vestry member, a senior warden, a lay reader, and he was a really, really good lay reader. I always enjoyed hearing Steve read. And a Eucharistic minister, he would take the Eucharist to people who were sick or in the hospital. Despite a demanding career and a busy life, though, I think Steve was absolutely clear on the fact that whatever demands were made on his time, his family always came first. In Steve's mind, he was a husband and a father before he was a judge and a lawyer. And Steve's daughters, Gay and Mary June and Sue and Sherry, always knew that he would do what was best for them and that their mom was the most important person in his life. Steve was always a part of his daughter's lives. He could always be counted on to be a presence at their sporting events, no matter how busy he was. And the Grimes home was always open to friends and Steve became the mentor to many of those friends over time. Today, you know, many of us talk about putting family before work, but Steve really did it. One of my favorite stories about Steve is a story that Sherry told me a couple days ago. She said that when she was a senior in high school, when they were still living in Bartow, Steve's name was being considered for appointment to the Supreme Court of Florida. And she said she came to him in tears because she knew that if he was appointed, they'd have to move from Bartow to Tallahassee and she would have to change schools. And so sobbingly, she told him her story. And Steve withdrew his name from consideration and was only appointed to the Supreme Court after Sherry graduated. Steve and Faye just missed celebrating their 70th wedding anniversary, and over the course of his life as a lawyer and then as a judge, Steve saw Faye as his anchor, his inspiration, and his best friend. I think Steve's death has brought grief to all of us who knew and who loved him. And I think the best way to deal with that grief is to listen carefully to Jesus' words in today's gospel reading. Let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, would I have told you that I'd go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself that where I am, you may be also. I think the best way to deal with grief and the best way to confront the reality of death is to meditate upon the promises of Jesus Christ. And here he makes a promise to us that is the anchor of our lives. If we trust in him, then nothing will actually be able to separate us from him. And ultimately, we will be with him. John 14, 1 through 6 always reminds me 
of Revelation 1, 17 to 18, where Jesus says this, fear not, I am the first and the last, the living one. I died and behold, I am alive forevermore and I have the keys of death and Hades. In the ancient world, to have the keys to something was to have sovereignty over that thing. And so here Jesus reminds us that it's not just true that he's been raised from the dead, but that he has sovereignty over both life and death. And therefore, we need not fear that anything might separate us from him. And that's the promise. In John 14, 1 through 6, Jesus speaks, I think, directly to our fear, our confusion, and our uncertainty by making a promise. In my Father's house, there are many places, and I have prepared a place for you. The image of the Father's house would have resonated deeply to Jesus' Jewish audience for this reason. You see, in the ancient world, most people lived in extended, multi-generational families who would live in the same dwelling. Among Jews, this place was called the Father's House. The Father's House was a place of safety. It was a place of belonging. It was a place of refuge, a place of love, a place where you found significance. The Father's house was home with a capital H. In the midst of life's uncertainties and sufferings and griefs, we sometimes wonder whether there really is such a place. But as Christians, we're allowed to confess with certitude, and even in the face of death, that such a place really does exist because it's been promised by God. You see, there really is a place of safety, a place of belonging. There really is a place of refuge, a place of love that Jesus has prepared for us. There really is a home with a capital H. And that hope is the stable ground upon which we walk. It is the source of our courage. It is the wellspring of our strength. It is the foundation of our joy, even in the midst of death. In John 14, 1 through 6, Jesus tells us about our Father's house. But in today's reading from Revelation 21, 2 through 7, we're given a picture of it. In the end, it's really not a matter of what we will meet, but who. In the end, we will meet God. And we will hear the final words that God has for his creation. Behold, I am making all things new. Write this down. For these words are trustworthy and true. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. Revelation presupposes that it's in our minds that we know that God spoke the first word in creation. In Genesis 1, God speaks the first word over the universe, and that word is, let there be life. The good news, Revelation tells us, is that just as God had the first word in creation, he also gets the last word. And we already know what that word is going to be because it's been spoken in Jesus' resurrection from the dead. The final word that God has to speak is the exact same as his first word. Let there be life. 
In Revelation 19, 6 through 9, we're given a peek at the end. And amazingly enough, that end looks a lot like a wedding. Hallelujah. For the Lord our God, the Almighty reigns. Let us rejoice and exalt and give him the glory. For the marriage of the Lamb has come and his bride has made herself ready. It was granted her to clothe herself with fine linen, bright and pure. And then the angel issues this invitation. Blessed are those who are invited to the married supper of the Lamb. You see, God's victory is so certain and so final and so sure that the celebration of it has already begun. And you and I are part of that celebration here today as we give thanks for Steve's life and as we recognize that God never lets go of that which belongs to him. Amen. Please stand now and let us confess this faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God. Please kneel as you are able. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Almighty God, you knit together your elect in one communion and fellowship in the mystical body of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Grant, we pray, to your whole church in heaven and on earth, your light and your peace. Lord, in your mercy, grant that all who have been baptized into Christ's death and resurrection may die to sin and rise to newness of life, that through the grave and gate of death we may pass with him to our joyful resurrection. Lord, in your mercy, grant to us who are still in our pilgrimage and who walk as yet by faith that your Holy Spirit may lead us in holiness and righteousness all our days. Lord, in your mercy, grant to your faithful people pardon and peace, that we may be cleansed from all our sins and serve you in faithful obedience. Lord, in your mercy, grant to all who mourn a sure confidence in your fatherly care that casting their grief on you, they may know the consolation of your love. Lord, in your mercy. Help us, we pray, in the midst of things we cannot understand to believe and trust in the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, and the resurrection to life everlasting. Lord, in your mercy. Grant us grace to entrust Steve to your never-failing love. 
Receive him into the arms of your mercy and remember him according to the favor which you show to all people. Lord, in your mercy. Grant that increasing in knowledge and love of you, he may go from strength to strength in the life of perfect service in your heavenly kingdom. Lord, in your mercy. Almighty God, grant us with all who have died in the hope of the resurrection, the fullness of your eternal and everlasting glory. And with all your saints to receive the crown of life, promised to all who share in the victory of your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please stand for the commendation. Give rest, O Christ, to your servant with your saints. You only are mortal, the creator and maker of mankind, And we are mortal, formed of the earth, and to earth shall we return. For so did you decree, saying, You are dust, and to dust you shall return. All of us go down to the dust, yet even at the grave we make our song, Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Into your hands, O merciful Savior, we commend your servant Steve. Acknowledge, we humbly beseech you, a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, a sinner of your own redeeming. Receive him into the arms of your mercy, into the blessed rest of everlasting peace, and into the glorious company of the saints in light. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds and the knowledge and love of God and of his son Jesus Christ and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always.
Go in peace to love and serve the Lord.